You're listening to the Business Building Rockstar Show, where your host, Nicole Holland, gets the lowdown from today's most talented, inspiring, and successful entrepreneurs on what it really takes to reach rockstar status. You are listening to episode 30 of the Business Building Rockstar Show. Today's guest is Kate Erickson of EO Fire, and I'm so excited to share this interview with you. Kate and I talked about how when you start up in entrepreneurship, sometimes it doesn't always continue, and there are breaks along the way, and that there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, for many people, including myself and Kate, it winds up being even better because then you really know what it is that you're passionate about doing. Sometimes we need that false start or we need what some people consider failures. I hope you'll get a ton of value from this episode. I want to remind listeners that if you're looking for a community to connect with and get resources with and you're looking for a business coach that can help you get your vision clear and also get your business goals and actions focused and online, I would love to invite you to join my community, The Tough Cookies. Find out more at bbrshow.com forward slash cookie, or you can text the word cookie to 33444 if you are in the United States. Again, text the word cookie to 33444 in the United States or visit bbrshow.com forward slash cookie. Now, without further ado, let's get to the interview. Hello and welcome to the Business Building Rockstar Show. I'm super excited today to be hanging out with Kate Erickson. She is a creator, engager, and implementer over at EO Fire, a seven day a week podcast that interviews today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. She's also the host of Kate's Take, the EO Fire audio blog, and author of The Fire Path, a beginner's guide to growing your online business not to mention community leader extraordinaire over at Podcasters Paradise, the ultimate podcasters training program and community, which I'm proud to be a part of. Kate is passionate about helping entrepreneurs create freedom in their business and life through developing systems and processes that can help their business scale and grow. Kate's other half, John Lee Dumas, was here for episode 13 of the Business Building Rockstars show, and now I'm so thrilled to have her here to represent. Kate, thanks so much for joining me today. Are you ready to rock? I'm so ready, Nicole. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. I'm so glad to finally connect with you. I've been in Podcasters Paradise and, you know, you're leading the way and I've listened to you for a long time, but this is the first time we're talking. So I'm super, super stoked to have you here. Yeah, me too. I've been looking forward to it. And thank you so much for your kind words. The the extraordinaire part was just like, put a big smile on my face. (laughs) (laughs) You totally are. And I know that I speak for a lot of people who have been in your communities and have experienced you. You're so amazing at just being really, um, you're so good at answering questions. You're so good at connecting people. You're so good at keeping things um, focused on the task at hand, if you will. I think it's something that when people have communities that grow into the thousands like you guys do, it's a really big task to sort of wrangle everybody in and keep people on the same page and create communities that are really collaborative And you just do such an amazing job of that. Thank you so much. It has been such an amazing learning experience. And the Paradise community, I mean, they're so incredible, like such rock stars, everybody. And you're right. It is very difficult to, um, you know, there's a balance there. You want people to be engaged and participating at the same time. There are certain things that you don't really want people getting down rabbit holes about. So Um, It's certainly been a huge learning experience for me, and I I really appreciate you saying that. Definitely. So why don't you fill us in a little bit more about what you're doing these days and how you support entrepreneurs? I know there's like a million things, so let us know a little bit more that the bio didn't tell. Yeah, for sure. So uh, John and I are partners in both business and in life. So we're boyfriend, girlfriend, we live together, we run the business together. And um, we complement each other very well, because John is kind of like this big idea, um, visionary, he he loves to put himself out there. Um, You know, he certainly feels fear, but he's definitely not afraid to push through that fear. Um, And I kind of compliment and bring up the other side where I'm very focused on the actionable steps and uh, what it's going to take for us to continue growing this business in the way that we want to. 
Um, so a lot of the times I see people just charging ahead because they know they want to build a business and have financial freedom and spend more time with their family and their kids, but they have absolutely no plan in place for how they're going to get there. Um, and one project that John and I just recently uh, finished launching is the Freedom Journal. And that was a, a physical product that we created to kind of help people with that process. Like, how do you actually set a goal? What do you need to do to put a plan in place? And uh, we teach people really about how accountability is so important on our journey. And hopefully you've seen that through Podcasters Paradise as well. This community aspect and this online world that we have access to is so incredible. And I think a lot of people take it for granted. There's so many things that you can be doing online right now to you know, gain credibility and authority and, and start a business that you're going to love and that other people are going to love. And it's going to help you create the life you want to live. It's just about understanding the actual steps you need to take to get there. So that's what I'm really passionate about right now. Very cool. Yeah. And I actually uh, did invest in that in your Kickstarter campaign. And it is a beautiful, um, very thick, very hearty book. And then on top of that, you have the app and you have the community, as you mentioned. So there's so much support. And what I really appreciate is you guys talking all the time and creating this book that helps people focus and also create smart goals. And that's something that um, is so paramount for people who really do have that big vision and they want to succeed. And it's not to say that if you have to, like if people are happy with where they're at, beautiful. But if you're thinking like, I want to get to this stage, I want to speak, you know, on Tony Robbins's stage or level or whatever, then you need to get very clear. And so I yeah. love how you guys give those supports and that you make them accessible to everyone. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for your support on that. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about way back at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> remember when you were really, really little, like before people told you what wasn't possible back in the day where, you know, mom and dad probably said, if you want to be the president of the United States, you can. What was it <laughs> that you were, what, what was your dream as a very young child? Yeah, I laugh when you talk about the president because I so distinctly remember this period in my life where my godparents were like, you're going to be the first female president. We just know it. And like they were so amazing at, you know, providing so much love and support. Um, but before all of that, I, I wanted to be an actress. That was my dream. Hmm. That's awesome. I can totally relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And then... um. What would you say your, when did you start in entrepreneurship? Because you, you didn't always do this. You've had jobs along the way as well, right? Absolutely. In fact, I, before I came, became an entrepreneur, I didn't know that entrepreneurship existed. And, and that's total honesty. Like I didn't know that that was a possibility for me. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have like a lemonade stand when you were a kid or go door to door selling pens or anything like that. You know, I do the lemonade stand thing and I get pretty fired up when we do garage sales and stuff, but I, I don't know. Like I hear a lot of people say, you know, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur from the time that I remembered I want to be anything. And mm -hmm. so I started lemonade stands and all this stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know. Is that entrepreneurial? I mean, I did that, but I never thought that like I'm going to continue doing like the next step of this. And that's what my life is going to be created out of. Like, I guess I never made the connection. So yeah, I mean, I, I got a job when I was 15 and a half years old. My parents filled out like the slip saying that they approved me working like under the legal age in California. And from the time I was 15 to I worked a job all the time since I can remember. And it wasn't until um, 2011 that I like kind of got a kick in the face and was like, oh, I, I can start my own business? Like, what's this about? <laughs> um, and so that, that was my first leap in 2011. That's so cool. Yeah. And I think a lot of people 
don't make that connection. And it's not for everybody. I think when I was a kid, like I was fired up and it, what it, what I think what it boils down to in hindsight was I loved making people happy. I loved serving people and I loved money. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like we had, when I was really young, um, my dad always gardened, right? We always had fresh vegetables and fruits and there was always more than enough. So like beyond the family, we gave it to the neighbors. And then what my dad did was um, he took my little brother's red wagon and we made a sign and he called it red wagon produce. And we would like cart the red wagon with all the fresh vegetables that we, you know, weren't using or didn't give away up to the pool, to the neighborhood pool. And we'd sit out and have like this little fruit and vegetable stand. And it was like, my little brother would like be there as long as he absolutely had to. And then the ice cream man would come, he'd be off at the pool. But I... <laughs> loved it. Like I just, I would stay there all night. I so preferred that to even going to the pool. I loved when people like placed orders and just that interaction. So I think that even though um, a lot of people have those childhood, childhood experiences, what I'm finding the more and more I talk to entrepreneurs and really people who are rocking it is that a lot of them did have that like, oh, even though I don't know what entrepreneurship is, I want this. I want to either make more money or help more people or there's some kind of pull. But then there's also so many people who absolutely don't. And it isn't until later in life where they're like, oh, kind of like you, I can make something. I can do my own business. Yeah, that's super interesting. What a freaking cool name, Red Wagon Produce. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> it was very creative, right? It was a Red Wagon and we sold produce. So <laughs> That's so cool though. I love it. I love yeah. it. I, I had this picture for years and with all my moves, um, I can't find it. I don't know whatever happened to it. It was the cutest thing. It was like, um, you know, back in the early, early eighties, maybe, no, it wasn't seventies. It was early eighties. And so it's like one of those discolored photos. And I was sitting there with my popsicle next to the wagon. With all the <laughs> Anyways, so I digress. Um, so in 2011, what did you... Like, did you jump then into entrepreneurship or was it a progression? Uh, it was definitely a progression. So kind of like my experience that that was very abrupt and was like, I am not working this job anymore and I don't want to work for anyone but myself. Um, that was a single day. Like I had been working, working, working towards this promotion. Long story short, I didn't get the promotion and I was just like, why am I doing everything right? Why am I doing everything everyone tells me to do? Why am I working harder than everyone else in my department? Why am I doing all the right things and not getting what I want? And it was like this little child tender tantrum that I threw where I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm so sick of like waiting for somebody else to give me what I want because it's clearly not the way the world works. Okay. Hello. Kate realizes this when she's like 25 or 26 years old. I'm like, oh, okay, I finally get it. Like I could do all the things right that other people are telling me to do. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get back what I actually want. So let me go ahead and see what happens when I try and create that for myself. Let me see what happens when I stop expecting other people to hand me stuff. And like, I just go do the things that make me happy and see what happens. So that's kind of like the day that that mindset shift happened for me. But it was probably about seven or eight months until I finally left my job because I was doing all this prep work and paying off debt. I still had student loans. I was living on my own. Um, so, you know, I had rent and groceries and all that good stuff. Um, so I, I, during that time, I really started laying out like a budget and a plan for how I was going to save money. And also, I was like, okay, I guess if I'm going to do this, I need to figure out what entrepreneurship is actually so that I can create a business that's going to help me create this life that I want to live. So that was kind of like the progression a bit. Awesome. So it was like, sorry, you said seven months from the time you created your budget and plan to actually saying goodbye? Yes. That's cool. And when you made that decision that you were going to say goodbye and and have your own business, what was that business like? Is it the same thing you're doing now or has it changed? No, it's changed big time. So um, when I first left my job, I tried to start my own business, which was going to be called, well, which was called 
Kate's copy. Mm-hmm. And um, I was an English major. I got my master's in English. I wanted to become a teacher, which didn't work out for me. So I was like, well, I didn't necessarily end up like as a college professor teaching others English, but that doesn't mean that I can't use like my copywriting and English skills to help other businesses. So uh, Kate's copy was really set out to be um, a resource for small business owners who weren't online yet or who kind of like didn't really understand the importance of having an online presence. I wanted to bring them online and help them create copy for a website and help them, you know, curate things that they could post on social media and really start building that online presence. Um, I did that for about six months and I did not get one client. Um, It was really, really, really tough. And I quit and I got I got a job. I went back to corporate America. What was that like for you? Um, you know, it was kind of like a huge sigh of relief on one end. And on the other end, it was just like, I can't believe that I couldn't make this work. Like, I knew how tough it was to work up the courage and overcome all the fear to leave my job the first time. And it was kind of like I was putting my tail between my legs and like just walking back, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, I I wasn't there yet. Like I wanted the business and I wanted to support myself and I wanted to generate revenue, but I didn't get it yet. And there were so many more lessons that I needed to learn And unfortunately, I didn't have the money in my bank account to support me just learning those lessons full time. So, you know, going back, um, luckily, I was going back to a job that had been my dream job for a long time. It was working as an account executive at a marketing and advertising agency. So, you know, I was really, really excited about that. And I knew that I was going to learn a ton that could potentially down the road really help me in what I was going to do as an entrepreneur. Like I knew a hundred percent when I went back and got that job that I would become an entrepreneur again at some point. It just wasn't the right time for me then. I think that is such an important takeaway here that, you know, you, you recognized what you're passionate about. You recognized, you knew you were going to be an entrepreneur, but you also you know, ego beside took a job to help you still reach those goals and going back into it. You know, I actually recently had a client that we kind of went through this where she was very resistant to working and finally accepted it as sort of an investment in building her business. So she Mm -hmm. went back into it as this is what I'm doing to pay the bills and I feel good about it because I'm paying the bills. I'm not feeling like I failed. It's like, and you know, you have that balance between what you know and what you know, right? Right. So I think yeah, really good um, point. And also, I love that you said that you weren't there yet and you had more lessons. And I can definitely relate um, having had a successful business in the past. And then I actually moved to California myself. I wasn't far from you in Coronado. Oh, and- Yeah. Yeah. So after Germany, I was in Coronado and then um, I wound up going to Arizona and there I did my my life coaching certification. And I, you know, just like everybody else, I was so pumped up and I believed that, you know, once I build it, they would come, right? And Mm -hmm. once I got out of the school, it was a different story and it was definitely a struggle to get clients. And then I was offered, I was invited to apply for um, a position that was beautiful on paper and, you know, would use my coaching skills and work with at-risk youth. And it was like what I wanted. Um, and then I took it and it sucked. And then I got into that place of like, oh my gosh, I need another job. So I didn't even think to start a business before. So nine years later, I decided, whoa, wait a minute, I am an entrepreneur. And when I finally did, I was like, oh, I'm so ready. Like there's yeah. nothing derailing me. 
Yeah, I think we get such tunnel vision and we compartmentalize like way, way to the extreme. And that's what I was doing. Like when I left my job to try and start Kate's Copy, I didn't realize that I could have started Kate's Copy seven months before and Mm -hmm. still worked that job and still had all the same lessons that I had. I mean, sure, maybe I, you know, quote unquote, failed faster because it's the only thing I was doing. But I love how you say that you got a job and you recognize that you could use the skills that you wanted to have in your entrepreneurial venture because that's, it almost became a game for me the last seven months that I talked about before I took my first entrepreneurial leap. I'm like, how can I focus all my time and energy, still get my job done really well, but really focus on learning the things that I know are going to serve me in my entrepreneurial venture. And I don't think that there is anything ethically or morally wrong with that. At least there wasn't for me. I was still getting my job done and doing it really well. Mm -hmm. I was just putting myself in different situations to where I would be honing in on and improving skills that I knew were going to help me in my business. And, you know, to a certain extent, that's what I did when I went back and got the advertising and marketing job. I love that job. It was an amazing opportunity. And I really focused on the things that I could learn that I knew were going to help me when I start, when, you know, I broke off and did my own thing again. That's awesome. 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 So if time travel were an option and you could go back 10 years, what advice would you give your younger self about this entrepreneurial stuff or life in general? Mm. Um, Probably uh, like a huge thing for me that has always been an inhibitor, I feel like, is letting fear control my actions. And I think a lot of us struggle with that because we are unsure of the outcome. Um, we're scared of failing. We're scared about what other people are going to think about us. Um, and, and I certainly did that. I let fear control my actions big time. And I believe I'd be where I am now like a lot faster if I wouldn't have allowed fear to control my actions and keep me from doing things that like in my gut, it felt right. But all my fears and like this voice in my mind were telling me, um, you know, but what if you fail or what if it doesn't work or what if you look stupid or what if people laugh at you? And so I didn't do any of those things. And I wish that I would have, you know, done them regardless. Yeah, beautiful. And you spark a thought for me that I want to leave listeners with as well with that. Um, Eva Gregory and Gina Gabellini talk about the what if up game. I love this. And it's really helped me and it's helped my clients to where when we do have, because we all have them, it doesn't even matter at what stage of business we're at, right? There's always, and, and not even necessarily in business, there's always those thoughts of, oh, well, what if bad, you know, what if, oh gosh, this is like the worst thing in the world and it stops us from taking inspired action. And so to flip that around, one thing that I've learned to do from those ladies is ask, well, what if up, what if it does work and then go really big? Like what if it works so well that, you know, this thing that I never imagined could happen and it puts us in a totally different space, eh? Mm, for sure. I am thinking of like all the times that I've said that. And then afterwards, like, even if it did happen, I'm still alive. Exactly. Like I'm still here. <laughs> like what is the worst, right? Yeah. That's, and I think what you just said, that was kind of like for me, a transition point before I got to the, what if it came, um, it was like, well, well, what if, you know, I'll survive, I'll get over it. I'll move forward. I always do. I think we forget how resilient we are. Right. And we tend to forget that like, this is it. We get this Mm -hmm. life and, you know, depending on your beliefs, whatever else might happen. But for like right now, this is the time. It's not next month or in four years from now, because like I've been reminded recently, repeatedly Mm -hmm. that anything can happen in a minute. You could be here one minute, not here the next. And, you know, why take that chance? Absolutely. Uh, I totally agree with you. So now you are very, um, you have a lot going on. Let's just say that. (laughs) You guys do so much. Um, What do you do personally for self-care to make it all possible? Um, I'm really big on a full night's sleep. 
Um, that's important to me. I like sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I'm not talking like 12 hours and waking up at 11 AM. I'm talking like I'm in bed probably about nine 30 and I'm, I try to get out of bed at 6 AM. So I'm getting a full night's sleep. Um, I'm huge on working out. I work out every single day. It makes me feel great. Um, when I don't work out, I feel gross and it distracts me in other areas of my life. Like I know that about myself. Um, I try to eat right as best I can. I'm, I'm very much into portion control. So like, you know, I'm not going to not eat the things I want. I'm just not going to overeat the things that I know aren't good for me. Um, and time with my family and my friends and, you know, with John, not as business partners, but as boyfriend and girlfriend, that's really, really, really important to me. And I'm, the last year, I've really, really been trying to focus in on giving 100% of myself to whatever's going on right now. And that has been a big struggle for me because I would find myself like even, you know, me and you are chatting right now, Nicole, and I'm thinking about what I have to do in an hour. Mm. Like I used to be so bad at that. Or like I'd be hanging out with my parents and I'd be thinking about the things that I could be doing for work or you know, working and thinking about how I wish I was with my family. Mm. I've really, really been trying to improve in that area and give myself 100% to what's happening right now. Um, the power of now was a really huge learning lesson for me in that by Eckhart Tolle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's really, really powerful and has really helped serve me and serve the people around me um, in terms of how I spend my time. Absolutely. I totally agree. I think being present is so vitally important. And before you said, you know, you only have this one life. It's so true. And if we're not in it and we're worrying or thinking about what's next, then we're missing so many cool, so many cool things. <laughs> and, and experiences like things that you don't, that you can't pay for and that you can't get back. Like, and it, experiences have become very valuable to me. Awesome. Now, uh, one last question before we start wrapping up. Um, who has been your most inspiring mentor? Uh, um, at the risk of cliche, it's really been John Lee. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one that even after I failed in my business and I went back to corporate America and I doubted myself, you know, he never, ever stopped encouraging me and He's really been a strong motivator for me. And since working together, I've learned more from that guy, just like literally, whether it's on paper or a system or a software or mindset, um, he's, he's really been such a huge part of me getting to where I am right now. That's so wonderful. I love it. So um, we are out of time. I'd love to talk to you all day, but I know you got stuff to do. So <laughs> why don't you let our listeners know how they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. Everything that we do is just over at eofire.com. Beautiful. Kate, thank you so much. It's been a blast. Thank you, Nicole. It was great chatting with you and really appreciate all you who are tuning in today. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. Kate is an absolute rock star. It was such a pleasure to have her on the show. And we talked about some really real stuff. And if you can relate, I would love for you to leave a comment about this episode and what really hit home for you in the comment section on the show notes page at bbrshow.com. And if you are interested in getting support from a business mentor who has been there, done it, and also is a rock star coach, I'd love to invite you into my community, The Tough Cookies. Find out more about that at bbrshow.com forward slash cookie, or you can text the word cookie to 33444 if you're in the United States. That's all I've got for you today. I look forward to reconnecting with you again for episode 31, where Dove Gordon and I get into the three questions your ideal clients ask themselves, the true purpose of a marketing and selling system, and also the secret behind Dove's successful online mastermind. Don't miss it. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this episode of the Business Building Rockstar Show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss a thing. And visit bbrshow.com for all the show notes and links to resources discussed on today's show. Plus, lots more.